The need for highly skilled professional labor is global and in sub-Saharan Africa there is a German-based initiative titled Africa Compt that seeks the most promising African leaders from different market fields to spend a year in top leading German companies and organizations. Within these organizations, they spend a lot of time training and learning and becoming the best of the best. Joining us for a conversation on her Africa Compt journey is one of the pioneers of this fantastic program. Her name is Lucy Wanjiko. She is the engineering director of EcoCycle Kenya Limited, and she's going to tell you more about her journey next. Did you always know you were going to be a mechanical engineer? You know, I was born with four brothers. I'm the only sister. So every time they were fixing toys, and we grew up in the village, so our toys would be made of uh, waste paper or uh, uh, timber or pieces of metal or those um, tin, blue band tins that used to be then. So when they were fixing their toys, I was always fixing with them. So it's like it was destined and I used to enjoy it. I was never this gully gully dolly girl. Right. I was just this rough girl with the four boys and fixing toys, going up the trees and in the farm. And maybe I just think it was destiny and it shaped me. I'm sure going through high school, going through university and saying, this is the course that I want to take, this is where I want to go, you got a lot of support from your family. Coincidentally, or uh, finally, my mom wanted me to be a doctor. But deep inside me, I, I felt I was not comfortable dealing with sickness and patients. And I always told her, I just want to be an engineer. So I made the first choice as a doctor, but all the other following choices, I chose three different engineering courses. And so when the results came and I had an A minus, voila, I was there called for engineering and I was so happy. I don't know whether my mom was disappointed, but um, later when I continue, continued doing it, she was happy with it because when I came back from university, I would even help fixing a few things in the home, like the solar panel has an issue. I would be there keen trying to see what can be done before she even calls a, a, a fundi to come and do it. So I believe she's happy with it, although she wanted me to be a doctor. And yeah. she was a teacher, a, a teacher, so she's flexible. I think she moved on and accepted it. You finished campus, you've got your degree. How did Africa Compt come to you? Immediately I finished university in 2004, I was very interested in joining automotive. I was very keen on automotive engineering. So the first place I landed was DT Dobby on internship. So I was dealing with parts, selling of parts and servicing of cars. And I continued being in automotive for about, I moved from DT Dobby, I went to Toyota, I went to GM. Then later I decided to shift uh, gear to selling engineering software that is called AutoCAD. That was about four years later in 2008. So when I was selling the engineering software as a technical sales engineer, that's when I came across the Africa Compt Initiative advert. And I just felt this is right for me because I was sort of getting, people used to think I was really getting bored really fast. I've already mentioned GM, DT Dobby. I never worked for anyone for more than a year. So I would get in, do something, and I just feel I'm not challenged. So when I was doing this software sales and then I come across Africa Compt and going to Germany where I believe is the home of engineering, I just felt this is the thing for me. And it was a right choice I made because it exposed me and it gave me a turn around after I attended the one year program. All right, you've talked about Africa Compt. There are many who are thinking we don't know what that is. So help us understand a little bit more about Africa Compt. And you were part of the pilot program. So what was it all about? Africa Compt is a German statement, but in English it means Africa is coming or Africa is rising. So Africa Compt focuses on picking young, talented, future potential leaders from Africa, people who have already worked for two to three years. So they handpick you and you have to go through an aggressive assessment like application assessment center, and then you're chosen to go to Germany. Now, when you're in Germany, you have to learn the German language because there everything is in German, the machines, the trains, when you go to the shop, so you get the language so fast. But for me, I actually love languages. So I got it actually in the first three months. I was 
was already able to speak fluently. So after the German language training, you're then now posted to the different companies that uh, you're supposed to be attached to, depending on your background. For me, I was an engineer, but I clearly stated I want to work on my soft skills side. So I went to an engineering company that is called Continental AG. If you've seen all the Mercedes, the Porsche, they come with tires that are called Continental. So I went to the company that manufactures those tires. And instead of being directly in engineering, I was taken to branding and marketing because I felt I had already gotten so much of engineering in my previous jobs in Kenya. And I felt like I need soft skills so that I blend my engineering with marketing, branding. And then if I want to do anything, start my own company, then I will have like an all-rounded uh, scheme person. So when you're taken to those companies, you stay there for nine months. And in between your training, hands-on training in the company, Africa Com, the organizers are called GIZ. They pick you for about two weeks or one week and take you into a class set up together as a group. And you're given themes on international leadership, communication skills, you know, all, all those soft skills that are needed for management. Okay. So that's the journey, basically the journey of Africa Comte. And they would like you to return back to your country once you're done with the program because they want people to come back and make an impact back in their countries. So the year was over and you came back home. Yes, yes. How long have you, has it been since you came back home? I came back in 2009. Actually, I must commend that uh, wherever I was working, when everybody else was coming back home, I got a one-month extension because my company said I was doing an excellent job on the project that I was working on, and they needed me to continue and finish for one month. So that is special. Every, after the training, everybody must come back home. But for me, I was given this one more month extension. And sort of if I wanted, probably I could have gotten a job, but I was keen on, on coming back home. So I came back in 2009. Okay, yes. you're coming back, you've been in a developed world, everything works, and here you are, you've got the skill, the soft and the hard skill, and you're in Kenya. And what did you do next? Go look for another job or begin to think about what can I create? I had seen quite a lot of things while I was out, here, out there. Although I was based in this tire company, I had gained a special interest because I used to really love visiting the parks when I was in Germany. So one time at the park in my town, Hanover, I just got curious about some fountain that was somewhere. So I remember speaking to one of the park attendants, so how, how is this fountain working? Where does the water come from? And they mentioned it's actually wastewater that has been treated and comes back, wastewater means sewage, so sewage has been treated and comes back to make fountains. So from the time I was in that park, which was at the beginning of my program, I got this interest about wastewater, managing parks and, and having greeneries out of wastewater. So I did a lot of research, despite not being in a wastewater company. I even attended trade shows and trade fairs that were exhibiting wastewater uh, concepts. So by the time I came back, although I was in this tire company, I had a feeling I need to do this thing back in Kenya because when I think of my city, I will come across sewer flowing in a channel. I'll come across a vast sewer. So I just felt like I went out and I found the solution. But now here I was with, with the solution, but I do not have capital. So what did I do? Coincidentally, when I arrived, another person who is an alumni from Moy University, a civil engineer, was also coming back to Kenya after having been exposed in America with the American army, working with waste, being a civil engineer in, in, in America. So coincidentally, he tells me, I'm coming back to Kenya, and I want to start this concept. I want to introduce this concept of machines that recycle sewage back to clean water. I said, I've been thinking about the same thing. So can I come work with you? He said, fine, when you arrive, uh, just come. Fine. I asked, what's the salary? Actually, it was not even going to match what I was earning as an intern in Germany, but I knew this is what I want. So I said, fine, whatever you pay me, I'm really interested about this concept. I'm going to come, and we're going to work with you. So guess what? Our first project was Enashipai Spa, oh, wow. the Enashipai Spa in Naivasha. It's a project that recycles all the waste from all those hotels, about 1,500 liters every day of sewage changes back to clean water and it's used. The green lawns you see in Enashipai 
right. is courtesy of reclaimed water. And that was my first project. I was very amazed. I, I did it from the manuals because even the Americans didn't come to train us. But I remember my boss asking me to read the manuals, understand the, how the things will be joined. And I oversaw it successfully. And when the, uh, jam, uh, when the Americans came now to inspect, they were like, we are so amazed. We found only just one thing that had not been done correct. But it's like 99% well done. Right. So just by that project alone, I felt like, I'm actually an expert in this thing. So it kept me moving. Before long, I was poached by another company that was doing the same. They, uh, they were actually the pioneers of wastewater in Kenya. So I got another offer, which was a better pay than what I was having. So I moved to them. Uh, I worked with them. I did a couple of projects. And again, I'm this person that just never settles. Yeah. Before long, <laughs> I was out of that company. Well and I was poached by another person in 2011. So I worked for them for about two years. I helped them introduce other machines from the US. And not before long after, about two years, I just felt I can do this thing it's as time me. To stand on I mean, I'm own. the expert. I'm the one who's been meeting the customers. I've, I've been doing a good job. So why not just do it with me? So coincidentally, one of the suppliers, uh, a German manufacturer that was also trying to sell through my employer, I mentioned to him and he said, Actually, I've been hoping one day you will say you can do this. And I just felt, wow, so I've, I should have just started this. So I started EcoCycle. I remember I just thought of the name one time in the house because I want to be eco-friendly and I want to teach people that uh, things can be used in a cycle, that you can never waste something. So I thought Eco and Cycle will make a lovely name. And I just made a logo, EcoCycle Limited. And in 2014, uh, the 10th of March, my company was registered. Looking at the scale that you have, what would you like Kenyans to start thinking and shifting in how they approach our resources and in also how we live? I'm, I'm passionate about the environment. So just the way we live and creating waste, if we can rethink uh, that approach. And I always encourage people for us to care for the environment it may, it may be too late to start telling somebody when they're already 18 years. Like what I saw in Germany, when from the time a kid is born, they sort of know where do you put the sweet paper, where do you put uh, cartons, where do you put that. So it's more of us as parents, parenting and at home and at the elementary school, we sort of train our young people to care for the environment, not just to throw trash anywhere or just to use things wastefully, just use every resource because resources can be exhausted but if you keep using in a mindful way and in a recyclable manner it's possible to keep our environment very clean and when you go to Europe Germany Sweden Finland it's not about the government keeping the streets clean it's more of the people of, of the, it's a culture it's it's a culture of the people you own it up from your own house to when you walk out of the street to when you go to the bus, everywhere you go. You know, in Germany, if you threw a paper or dropped a paper in the train, you would just get a certain look from everyone that you will just bend and pick that paper. So we need to have that culture of just conserving where we are. Because I think the problem we have a mentality, somebody will clean after me. I think that's not right. We need to instill the mentality from when somebody is born that you look after your own mess and you care of everything that is around you. What would you like to say to someone who's tuned in and thinking, I'm interested, I'm ready to grow, I'm interested in seeing what else I can learn courtesy of this Africa Compt initiative? What would you like to say? Africa Compt is a great initiative. I would encourage everybody that is a dreamer, that is a go-getter, despite the language barrier, because some people might think learning German, I mean, German is long words, too difficult. Go for it if you're a dreamer. If you want to expand your horizons, open up your knowledge. By that one-year exposure in Germany, my mind just opened up and it showed me that I'm unlimited. So anybody that feels you're a go-getter, you're a dreamer, you're passionate, take the Africa Com chance, it will, it's just, it's a turning point professionally. Most of us that have been through it have had a turning point and we don't regret it. For the rest of this story, please click here.